what up you guys um long time since i had a sit down video um <clears throat> i am basically doing an update and you know i have to share it with you guys uh, yeah i'm on here doing an update for you guys because um as you guys read by the title um it's I saved Mark's life when I took him to the hospital on April 22nd. Hold on, I'm sweating, y'all. I'm sweating. It is um, hot. Today's the warmest day that it's been in a very long time. So I'm very hot. I got the window open to give me some air. But, um, but yeah, on April 22nd, I received a text message and... Well, even before that, Mark was telling me about, you know, bless you. Sorry, y'all, precious down here. Um, you know, Mark had told me about the bump that he had, you know, kind of like on your belt line, on your pants line type thing on around your waist. Um, he was like, you know, it was in that area. And he was like, you know, where it is, it's really irritating. So I'm going and, you know, he just decided to pop it. And what had happened when he popped it is it imploded um when i say that you know how normally when you pop a pimple it pops outwardly you know the stuff comes out well the stuff went back in to him and he um he ended up just like becoming in so much pain and he uh you know was telling me for like and I think like two days had went past since that happened and he was like my stump my lower abdominal you know hurts so bad <clears throat> he was like it hurts so bad um you know and I was like you know what let me look let me look at the area and see what's going on and stuff and something that started off so small like like even like smaller than my thumbnail popped and ended up like within the two days it had ended up to be like the size of a like a 50 cent piece like a dollar coin type thing and I was like that does not look good that is it's infected because he had ended up his whole lower stomach was like t felt like he had balls in his stomach like tennis balls like it was, it was like, you know, it was so hard and, you know, it felt like he had like tennis balls in his stomach. And I was like, you know, it's infected. You have to go to the doctor. He's like, no, no, I don't want to go. And he was like that with me for two days. And then on that second day afterwards, I was like, you need to, you know, you need to get seen. I was like, you either need to go downstairs to the car and... I take you or I call the ambulance and so he <clears throat> I gave him that ultimatum like earlier that day and by that evening he was like you know what babe you're right I need to go something's not right and so it took him I would say about a good 45 minutes to even get to the car from our bedroom and he had to take his time. He had to sit down. He could. It hurt it to bend over. It hurt it to do stuff. You know, got out to the car. He's leaning on the hood of the car because his stomach was just hurting so bad. And finally got into the car, and then I took him into the emergency room. <clears throat> and from there, the rest was history. Like as soon as I got him, as soon as we got into the ER and they seen him, they admitted him right away. Um, the only bad part about everything that happened was that during the time of being in the emergency room and getting to upstairs to the ICU, to, we got to the ER at um, 10 o'clock that night and we didn't get into the ICU until about six o'clock that morning. So, you know, it was a long time of us waiting and like Mark's memory is so, f like he doesn't even remember all of this because he was in so much pain and he was like kind of like in and out of consciousness and um you know it took us that long to even get upstairs to the ICU and then 
we finally got upstairs to the ICU and they like within like an hour's time they come they come and tell me well we need to take him back right now we need to ha he needs to have emergency surgery um if we don't he's gonna die and I was like wait what you know like what the hell is going on and they were like we need to take him back right now or he's gonna die he's going septic and I should look and see what septic is hold on hey Siri what is being Hi. septic what it what is becoming septic Let me have a look. Okay, I found this on the web for what is becoming septic. It's um, septic sh septic shock is a uh, complications of an infection, and it be and it um, can cause inflammation and could become very life threatening. Which for Mark it did. Um, he during the time where they went back and and done surgery and stuff like that. Um, his heart was failing, his kidneys were failing, and his lungs weren't working. Like, his lungs were not working. So, they ended up going to do emergency surgery on the incision. Um, if I remember right, um, they told Mark the exact measurements of the incision in his stomach. It, from one end of his abdominal to the other end, it <clears throat> was, I think, about 17 inches long this way like one side of your abdominal to the other and 11 inches deep just pulling out all the infection you know some skin some muscle you know uh the infection had spread and it had also gotten to his bloodstream so his everything started failing he ended up being on life support so basically he was put in a medical induced coma and he stayed there for a while like he stayed there for good week week and a half um on life support and I have pictures and images from his hospital stay but I'm not gonna post those at this time because he wants to do his own update so I'm gonna give him that um you know it's his, it's his update to do so I'm going to um let him share his story about of his experience of going through it you know um but yeah like even he ended up having two surgeries obviously the one on his lower stomach but also he had to get a tracheotomy done because his lung by his lungs not working um they had to breathe for him so he had a trach put in and you know it, it was just so crazy and I swear like I tell him that time frame that he was in the hospital went by like so fast like it felt like a dream you know and I had told him you know like you know you're so hard-headed I kept saying that like you're so hard-headed you know like just like next time don't be so hard-headed you know like it could be it could be um not he cannot be this lucky the next time so, you know, he gets out of surgery and everything, and they said it's going to be a long process because he's not breathing on his own. They even had to restart his heart, um, not for the first surgery, but, for, but, but just before the second surgery because his heart wasn't going to be strong enough to go through it, but he needed it done. <clears throat> so they, they ended up completely stopping his heart and then restarting it, which scared the hell out of me because I'm like, what if he's not strong enough for his heart to restart, you know? What if I, what if he doesn't, what if his heart doesn't start, you know? So it was so many choices that me and his mom had to make that uh, we were just like, holy shit, you know? Like, how the fuck, how the fuck do we answer these questions, you know? And after all of his surgeries and stuff were done, the surgeon who had been working on him came and he was like, if you would have not brought him in when, when you did, he would have died he was because of how bad the infection and stuff was he was like um he would have died that night in his sleep like if he would have waited one more day to come to the hospital they said there was like a 90 percent chance that he would have died in his sleep 
and I'm like, I, you know, like I told Mark, I don't want to take that, that acknowledgement of saving his life. You know what I mean? Even though I did, <clears throat> but <clears throat> he, <clears throat> I don't know. Like, I just, I, I feel like I don't deserve that. You know, like, I don't know. Like maybe it's a pride thing or, you know, I'm not trying to be too great. You know, like I'm grateful that he's fairly alive, but I don't want to take that, take that acknowledgement, you know, like. You know, but the doctors, you know, they told me that, like, if you would have never brought him in when you did, he would have died that night. Like, and he could have easily died on the surgery table or anything. You know, they said that he, he is like a miracle story is what they're saying, you know, because of how, how far he came along. Because most of the time when they see people in the state that he was in, that they don't make it. And... For that, I am like so grateful. I am so grateful, like um, that he's still here because I don't know how. Like I told him, I don't. I wouldn't. I don't even know how to explain how I would feel if it would have went the other direction. Um, but long story short, you know, I made this video more so to give you guys kind of an update as to what happened and how I technically saved his life. Like, you know. <sighs> trying I'm not gonna cry I'm not gonna cry even though it's a very emotional time I did a lot of crying when it happened and you know um but yeah I technically saved his life and he's doing so much better now he's in the um video that Mark does um for you guys I don't know if it's gonna be on my channel or if it's gonna be on the channel he has um so I will keep you guys updated but he's gonna sit down and talk and <clears throat> he's going to tell you guys stuff, obviously, that he remembers after waking up, you know, until now. And also the stuff that we've told him that happened to him and how he felt getting that stuff told to him. You know, he's still in shock at the images of his stomach. Like, he didn't realize how bad it had gotten. Like I said, he was so out of it there that he didn't know what the heck happened you know and he doesn't even remember <clears throat> when the doctor that the time that the doctor came and told me that he needed to go have that surgery or he was gonna die the doctor told him the same exact thing but he didn't even remember it he just remembers when coming into the hospital that's it like that that's it but um but yeah i just wanted to come on here Hope you guys enjoyed this story time. Um, you know, it's just some realness and some stuff that I wanted to talk to you guys about, uh, about especially about what's been going on and, um, you know, just like I said, uh, just how I saved his life. And, you know, if and I, you know, want to tell you guys if, you know, something's going on with you and somebody tells you to go see someone to go to the doctor or whatever, do it. Don't be hard headed just because you don't want to go or just because you don't like doctors. Don't, you know, take into stride that they're trying to help you when they tell you to go see a doctor or whatever, you know, like go and do it, you know, because anything can happen. Something that you may think is so minute, um, just like how Mark thought that little tiny pimple was so minute, turned into a life threatening situation. And he literally almost lost his life. You know, and so don't take that stuff for granted and just <clears throat> don't think, oh, it ain't nothing. I'm just, you know, whatever, you know, look what happened. He brushed it off for days and yesterday, what was yesterday? Uh, yesterday was April, uh, May 26th from April 22nd to May 26th. He took his first steps yesterday. It was only like four steps but he took his first steps in over a month yesterday his body isn't strong enough yet to walk he still is in the bed you know
Straight out the mud, yeah, I came up from nothing. Yeah. Got it on my own, all me, no skirt. Stand behind my bars like I was in fucking prison on some 2020 shit, making niggas get my vision. Yeah. A year ago, wasn't too many fucking with me. me. Shout out to everybody that's fucking with me. me. And when I blow up, ain't too many coming with me. I'm at the top, she wants the title, she can come and get me. I be flowing, I be going like a motherfucker on some rocket shit, taking off in this motherfucker.